I want to thank you for listening to this Wednesday evening service of First Baptist Church in Loosedale, Mississippi. Tonight, we're going to be looking at one word from 1 Peter. It will differ according to the translation that you have, but essentially, uh, the word we're going to be looking at is the little word kept. In the preceding verse, we're told that there is an inheritance that is imperishable and undefiled and that will not fade away, that itself is reserved in heaven for us. But that is of little comfort for us unless we ourselves are also kept. I hope you will gain some comfort from this word tonight as you think about yourself. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 is where we find the, the word, and it says simply this, who are kept by the power of God, through faith, unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Kept. It is an unusual looking word. Short, precise, quickly spoken, but powerful. Kept. Preserved. Treasured. Guarded. Cherished. Loved. Safe. Kept. In Greek, it means to be guarded surrounded by a garrison of soldiers. Allow me to show you how the same word is used in other places in the New Testament. Remember, it is the same Greek word, although it may be translated differently in English. Paul used it in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 32, where he said, In Damascus, the ethnarch under Aretas, the king, was guarding the city of the Damascenes in order to seize me guarding the city. The word kept is the word that is used there. In Galatians 3.23, Paul wrote, But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, being shut up to the faith which was later to be revealed. The same little word kept used in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 is translated kept in custody in Galatians 3.23. And then he uses it again in Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehensions, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All of these are the same word. But here, the word used of us is kept. The English translations render the word as follows. In the various translations, you find it thusly. In the NIV, it is shielded. In the New American Standard Bible, it is protected. In the Amplified Bible, it is protected and shielded. In the Holman Christian Standard Bible, it is guarded. And in the Good News Translation, it is kept safe. These are the various translations of this little word, kept. Whatever the word in its meaning, we must also note the person and the process of our keeping. It is God himself doing the keeping. That would be enough if the verses simply left it at that. But this verse surrounds the word with so much more of the activity of God that it requires us to look deeper and think deeper that we might know the depth of this keeping that God gives to us. First, we are kept by God's promise. This is a commitment that God himself has given to us. The God who, according to verse 3, has caused us to be born again, will not lose the investment He made in our lives. So this promise comes to us from God. It is His word. It is His pledge. It's not the idle word of an apostle. It comes to us as a word from the Lord that we will be kept, that we are in the process of being kept and that we can be confident in that keeping. Why can we be confident? Because not only is this keeping by God's promise, but we are also kept by God's power. The word, as I told you, means to be garrisoned about by soldiers. We are garrisoned about by God's power, guarded by God's power, shielded by God's power, protected by God's power, kept safe, by God's power. What can break through that line of defense? What can be lost when we are surrounded by horses and chariots of fire like those that surrounded Elijah? Unlimited power, 
unimaginable power. That power that created the universe and all that is in it. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. The fullness of that power. Keeping us. Holding us. Making sure that we come safe by God's promise. But we are also kept by God's power. The word, as I told you, means to be garrisoned about by soldiers. We are garrisoned about by God's power, guarded by God's power, shielded by God's power, protected by God's power, kept safe by God's power. What can break through that line of defense? What can be lost when we are surrounded by horses and chariots of fire like those that surrounded Elijah? Unlimited power, unimaginable power, that power that created the universe and all that is in it, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, the fullness of that power, keeping us, holding us, making sure that we come safely through the battle. That is why we believe the Bible teaches the security of the believer. It is because the keeping of the believer is not left to the believer's own strength or power, but to the power of God. As David wrote in Psalm 37, verse 24, When he falls, he will not be hurled headlong, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. We are kept by the power of God. Not only so, we are kept for God's purpose. Kept by God's power for a salvation. The God who caused us to be born again to a living hope is keeping us by his power for salvation. The Greek word is soteria, but it is something that can only be accomplished by a sotir. It is not something we can accomplish by our own power. Salvation must be accomplished by a Savior. I can't begin it in my life, nor bring it to fruition by my own effort. On Sunday, we looked at that great promise in Romans 4.16. For this reason, it is by faith in order that it may be in, in accordance with grace, so that the promise will be guaranteed. This is God's purpose. He initiated it. As Paul said in Philippians, He who began a good work in you will continue to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Because that is God's own purpose and can only happen by a work of God Himself in a person's life. Once that purpose is initiated in a person's life, God himself ensures the keeping of that purpose to its fulfillment. He keeps safe that promise. He garrisons the army of heaven around it so that there is no chance of his purpose meeting failure. Doubt God's power to bring about his purpose, and you have not only doubted God's power, but also his promise and his person. We are kept by the power of God, for a salvation. Not only so, we are kept for a prepared experience. This salvation that we know through our trust in the Savior is incomplete only in that there is more yet to be revealed. The word ready also means prepared. At home, when I am anxious about eating, I say, is it ready yet? You know what that means. It means that everything is in process and we're just waiting for the moment when it comes out of the oven so we can enjoy eating what has been prepared. But that is not what this word says. It doesn't say that it will be ready. This word says ready, prepared. That means it's done. The table is set. All is finished. I don't know if you ever went to grandma's house when they threw a tablecloth over the table. Not just over the table, but over the food. It kept in some warmth and kept away the flies. But the moment came when the tablecloth came off, and there it all was, piled up high and ready to enjoy. Why would God let something He prepared go to waste? This salvation is accomplished. It is prepared. It is ready. It just waits the revealing. The Greek word revealed comes from the word apokalupto. It means to uncover to lay open what has been veiled or covered up, lay bare, to manifest or disclose what was before unknown. So you see, salvation is ready. It is ready for you. It is ready for me. And we are being kept, guarded, protected, kept safe, 
shielded by the power of God and the promise of God, by the purpose of God and by the person of God for that which has been prepared by God. Not only so, we are kept for a period yet future. It says here, ready to be revealed in the last time. Some translations re, uh, read at the end of time or on the last day. As you might know, there are two Greek words for time. One is the Greek word chronos, and it means time, like time on our clock. The other is the Greek word kairos, and it means time in terms of seasons, and it's that word that is used here. When is that? Well, we don't know. We can't know. It's not for us, according to Acts 1-7, to know the times and the seasons which the Father has fixed under His authority. The word seasons there in Acts 1-7 is the same word used here translated in the last time. But the New American Standard Bible translates that same word in Acts 1-7 as epochs. But here it translates it time. I just want you to see that Peter is not referring to the last second, but to the last season or epoch of time, according to Acts 1-7, which the Father has fixed. And that word means set, purposed, or ordained. That is a period yet future. It is a period that is not for us to know when it is, but it is a period for which we are protected until that period comes and the fullness of God's purpose is revealed to us. That purpose that Peter refers to as a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. But ultimately, how are we kept? Well, the Bible says here in 1 Peter 1, 5, we are kept through the placing of our hope in Jesus Christ. It says, who are protected, shielded, guarded, surrounded by the armies of heaven and kept safe through faith. So is it our faith that is stronger than all the demons of hell and must outlast every onslaught and every strategy of Satan to cast us down? No, it is when by faith we put our hand and our hope and our heart in the hand of God that the Bible promises when he falls. He will not be hurled headlong because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. We put our faith in him and he keeps us. He protects us. He guards us. He shields us. He keeps us safe from here to eternity with the same guaranteed protection that he will keep us throughout eternity, kept by his promise, kept by his power, kept according to his purpose, kept for a prepared experience and kept for a period yet future, but best of all, kept through faith. I hope this has been encouraging for you tonight. Thank you so much for listening to this service of First Baptist Church in Loosedale, Mississippi.